Welcome to the Simple Little Life book review. About a month ago, well, it's like my birthday a month ago, my wife bought me this book and I'm really, really enjoying this book. This is a book about Japanese kitchen knives. This one's very interesting because, you know, it has a lot to do with the specifics about how these knives are made, but it also goes deep into the rich history, the craft of Japanese knives. And it's a fascinating, fascinating read. Uh, I'm telling you, if you like knives, you will like this book. The photography is amazing. And I thought, you know what? Rather than me just sitting here saying, hey, this book is great, you should get it. Why don't we talk with the author? So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We are going to head into Calgary. I'm meeting Kevin Kent. He wrote this book. He's graciously agreed to meet with me and uh, just have a little bit of talk about the book. So, let's go. Oh, it's ever bright outside. I'm here with Kevin Kent, uh, the gentleman who wrote this book. Kevin, thank you so much for your time. Hey, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, so I got this book about a month ago, and I've just, I've really, really enjoyed it. And I want to share it with my audience, and I thought the coolest way to do that would be to talk to you about it. So thank you so okay. much. I really do appreciate your time. I will talk to anybody who wants to talk about my book. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic book. There's not, <clears throat> there's not a lot of books about knives. I have a few books and even some about Japanese blacksmithing. I'll let you know, first of all, I'm not a reader. Okay. Um, I should be, uh, you know, I try to show my kids that I read sometimes, but <laughs> but honestly, this book has me interested, right? Like, what? I'll even shut That's the TV right. off to read it because of the stories and the way you delve into it, but we'll get to that stuff in a minute. But just real quickly, uh, for the audience there, what's uh, what's your background? Like, what made you, what kind of get into how you <clears throat> got to this? Oh, God. I was a chef forever. Yeah. Right? I was a, I, I worked here in Calgary, in out in the mountains, and then in London, England for a bunch of years. Oh, really? And I, in, the, in 1999, in London, England, yeah. I bought a Japanese kitchen knife. Yeah. And I said, holy bananas, this yeah. is yeah. not just better, but way better yeah. than the knives I was using, right? Yeah. It stayed sharp longer, it yeah. was lighter, it was just, and it was way sharper. Yeah. So it was everything I wanted. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't know, over the course of eight more years being there, I kind of swapped Oh, all my okay. knives overall, like all my European knives turned into Japanese knives. Yes. Where were you getting the knives from? Was it like... There was a guy in London. Oh, okay. That, that imported Japanese yeah. knives? Yeah, oh, he imported okay. Japanese yep. knives. He had a tiny shop. He, you had to go into a parking lot, a parcade, yep. and then go up the ramp, oh, okay. and then go into an unmarked office. Really? <laughs> he didn't want any <laughs> customers. <bit> <laughs> yeah. Huh, that's something else. And so that was your first experience with Japanese knives? Yeah, so I started buying Japanese knives. Eight years later, I moved back to Calgary. Okay. And there's really nothing in, in Canada, yeah. in, in, like to my taste. There's nothing yeah. worth buying in my mind. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'll contact the guy in London. Yeah. I'll make a few contacts and I'll port. My big plan, yeah. big plan, I was going to import some knives, yeah. sell to a couple of chefs so I could afford more knives. Yes. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. That was the whole plan. Good plan and it, it's worked out to that end at least for well, sure, they, right? that, Yeah, I've yeah. got a lot of knives now. <laughs> yeah, very right on. That's cool. And then, uh, so it kind of came from there, and uh, I, I've read a bit about it in your book and stuff, and, and following you on social media and stuff. It oh no! Started to build Don't a little bit. Yeah, social no, no. media. <laughs> it started to build a little bit, right? Yeah. So we yeah started selling a few knives out of my backpack to chefs yeah. around town on a bicycle. On a, yeah, I didn't. That's I, couldn't, awesome. I couldn't afford a car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a bike so I just, guy. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, I love bicycles. Yeah. Next year I'm turning fifty, oh, and I'm cycling from here to St. John's, Newfoundland. That's something, hey. Come on, that's fun, right? That is. That is. I like bikes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so I'd cycle around, had a backpack full of <clears throat> incredible uh, knives, yeah. and sell to a few chefs. Yeah. And that's how it started, and it just kind of got out of control. Yeah. After about six months, I found that I had rented, <laughs> I'd rented a closet at another store. Yeah. So I had a 10 foot by 14 foot room. Really? Uh, just down the street, about a block down here. Yeah. So we opened that, we were there for about a year, and now we've been at this location for 10 years. Wow. That's and then, else. yeah, so then we opened Ottawa stores in Vancouver yeah. and Edmonton. Yeah. And uh, and then, about 
two years ago now, <clears throat> we had all of our managers in for a meeting and they said, God, we really need a good knife book. How yeah. come there isn't any good knife books yeah. that we like? Yeah. And then they said, you should write one, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I complained bitterly for about nine months yeah. about how hard it was. Yeah. This is how I write a book. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> and I pull the paper up, crumple it up, yeah. and throw it on the ground, yeah. and start again. Yeah, I haven't read that Come line on. in here yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just got crumpled up. Oh, okay, gotcha. But eventually, oh, yeah. we got a book. Yeah. I just wanted a book that showed that I was like, I'm a fan of yeah. these blacksmiths, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of peel back the curtain, show that they're highly skilled at what they do, yeah. how they do what they do, kind of what their philosophy is, yeah. oh, but also that they're real humans. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like you read about Totani in there. He's the bass player in a band called Experimental Crossbreed. Really? Yeah. He's rapped. Yeah. That's, that's one thing I noticed about this book too, is that uh, a lot of care has been given to the makers, right? And an appreciation for it. Well, yeah. And so, I mean, you have you still have a good relationship, or like you, yeah, but you can tell by the writing of the book. I, I go to Japan two or three times a year. Yeah. In fact, I'm off to Japan in four weeks. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, which would be great. Yeah. Because it's been a year. Oh, wow. Usually I go in October, but I skipped last October because I had the book to promote. Oh, okay. Went on a book tour. Yeah. And it just it, it, it ate into my Japan trip. Yeah, yeah. So, huh. I'm excited to get back. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, so that was kind of like the impetus behind the book. There, there needed to be something, right? Yeah. And um, what's. Like, what have you have you learned anything new by writing this book, or is it just kind of oh, putting your stuff? I learned all kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. I learned that I wasn't nearly as smart as I thought I was. Really? Yeah. I, I guess I've had, I had to, your research. Well, you start. Yeah, you start writing, and you're yeah. thinking, oh, I actually don't know this. Yeah. Yeah. Something you're quite confident with, but all of a sudden you have to write it. It's like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So I asked a lot of questions, and uh, and yeah. I, in fact, one of my trips to Japan while I was writing the book was just to write. Oh, really? So I just took my computer and my notebook yeah. and I set up in different people's blacksmith shops really? and said, okay, ignore me. Yeah. Just ignore me. Really? So I'd be there when they came in the morning yeah. and I'd, I'd watch it. It's kind of like my personal TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And something. typing and writing. That is and cool. So are we got a busy shop today. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. We're just doing this interview kind of in the shop here, so, um, so everyone it's a real deal. To stand yeah. out of the way while Mike collects some knives. <laughs> Mike's coming to Japan with me. Is he? Oh, yeah, well, I always bring somebody. Yeah. It's yeah. Fun. That's cool. That's cool. And then also, one thing I really like uh, is the lineage that you kind of talk about, the history, how some of these blacks was, was it like 70 generations? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 1100 years or something? What is it? Like Maybe if you I'm... go here to the Mortakas. These guys yep. have been making knives and swords since 1293. Wow. So they can trace their history and their family back 27 generations. Yeah. And they all made a sword. Yeah. So they can they can say, this was the sword from the first military. Wow. This was they're missing of the 27, they're missing, I think they said three of yeah. their ancestors. Yeah. They don't have an example, but two of them are in a local museum. Wow. But then there's one that's just vanished. Yeah. 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 You don't have a deer. I, I don't. Because <laughs> I've also heard that you won't tell anybody how many knives you actually own. I have, a, I, have a, I, have, um, I have some knives. Yeah. yeah. Like an almost an unhealthy collection, you mean? Like. <laughs> If you looked at my knife collection, yeah. you would not say, that's reasonable. Really? <laughs> that's and even a guy like you who loves knives, yeah. you would say, that's, that's not reasonable. <laughs> that's not something that about. That's, that's not That is cool. Knives. That is cool. People that are, are thinking about a book like this, the one thing I do like about it too is that you go deep into explaining these different ways, right? And for me, that's like, okay, what makes a Yuko, what makes a, um, a Santoku, right? Or, or a Bunker, and it's, it's it's interesting because you kind of go through and there's chapters in every part about the different knives and their uses. Yeah, so the book is like the first 200 pages is all about the blacksmiths yeah. and the craftsmen and the sharpeners and the handle makers. Yeah. Which helped looks right now. That was the part that surprised me enjoying so much. I, I, I was going to kind of gloss over that, but when I started reading it, I'm like, oh, these are real people. It's because they're cool guys. <laughs> but you did, you did a way of, of kind of bringing them to us. And when I read them, I'm like, oh, this, this guy's interesting, you know? So I think it was very well written. And that's one big surprise with this book, I'll tell you that. I didn't think I would appreciate that part of it. I was like, oh, I'll flip through it. And I read the first one, I'm like, wow, who's next? You know? And I keep, really? Oh, 
I can go. I've kind of looked a little bit at the back, but I'm reading through these parts because this is fascinating. This is like a well written book, right? Oh Not just about knives, but about the people. You know? Make my day. No, we, we just want to go around cookbook awards. Really? Yeah. really? A Canadian award. Yeah. So it's entered into the international one. So I'm going to make a big noise yeah. if something happens. Yeah. That's, cool. That's something else. Makes sense when you're doing stuff in the kitchen, right? And you learn how the knives do different things and stuff. So, so. The other thing I like about the book, I mean, it, it covers the the blacksmith, which I really like. But then there's also a lot of good technical stuff, right? Like myself being somebody who's trying to make knives, there's a lot of value in the back end of this book. Oh, but you flatter, you flatter. No, no, it's you true though. Um, you know, stuff like the the shapes. I actually did a YouTube video a while ago, and I inserted for like half a second the impossible algorithm, or the impossible code of, of Japanese knife names, right? Because I'll say I made a Yuto, and people are like, that's not a Yuto. That's, 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 like, I don't know how to do those. Yeah. So, this book does a lot of the spelling of that stuff, right? For people like myself who's ignorant, I mean, I see a knife and I think of a Japanese knife name, like, that's gotta be it. But uh, very specific tasks for different shapes and yeah. profiles and thicknesses and stuff. And then they also probably use different steels for different knives as well. Would that be so, or is that more of a quality thing? Uh, yes and no, okay. and yes. Yeah. Yeah, all those questions are right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. A lot of times somebody will make a line of knives and they'll all be the same steel, yeah. right? But I wouldn't use the same steel for something like this. Okay. This here is a Deva. Okay. So if you see... That's a monster. That looks right? like the knife I would make. <laughs> so this side is concave. Yeah. And this surface here is concave. Okay. And then it's only sharp on one side. It's like a, it's like a big chisel, right? Yeah. Let me now, get a close-up of that. Here, well you can... Here, we'll just set it right here in the book. I'll let you do that. <clears throat> okay, so this part here is actually hollow, yeah, so they, like a little bit hammer, concave. So they've, yep. they've, they've hammered that concave and they've hammered the back concave. Yep. Now, a steel a knife like this is a filleting knife for, yep. for fish, right? Yep. So if you were a, a sushi chef, this is what you would use. But if you flip it over and we see the blade road here, you are removing that much steel. Yeah. You're sharpening, right? It's a ton of steel. Yeah. And you, sometimes you'll see Blacksmith make a knife like this from ZDP189. Oh, okay. Which is super wear resistant, one of the yeah. hardest steels around. <laughs> really? But I think that's madness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you won't buy one of those here. So when you say, you know, are certain steels more suited to certain knives? Yeah. For example, the ultra hard, super wear resistant steels, I think, are not suited to this. Yeah. Because when you do resharpen, it will take you months. Ah, gotcha. Rather than making the job easy. Yeah. That's incredible, though. I know. You gotta know what you're doing too. It's nice and heavy. Yeah. So if you're filleting, yep. here I'm gonna give you a quick Japanese filleting. Okay. Sounds There's good. There's lots of ways. Yep. But if you've got, let's say, a salmon. This is. Let's say this is my little baby salmon. Yep. Right. Often you'll see Western chefs they'll cut in like this is the head. They'll cut in behind the gill and just kind of yeah. soft. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, what happens then is you end up with a lot of meat still on the bone. Okay. And a lot of bones in the meat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a Japanese chef will come in this way. He'll come in from the tail or the head, but just come in like this and follow the spine or follow the like the, 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 the bones that are coming up vertically like that. Yep. Follow it just to the spine, flip it around, and then come in on the belly side to the spine and then do this. Gotcha. So what's happening is there's hardly any meat left here on the bones. Yeah. You just fill it. There's no bones on the fillet. Ah, just like that. And it looks great. Yeah. And you get a ton more uh, yield. You get more fish yeah. out of it. Yeah. It looks beautiful, yeah. and it's something, it's, it's a good way to fill it, I think, yeah. but this knife really helps. Yeah, and so then that would be specific for somebody holding the knife in the right hand, right? This is a right, yeah, so this is a right-handed. And then Deba. a left would basically be the and opposite, right? We've got, we've got oh. ambidextrous ones here. Oh, okay. so this one's sharpened on both sides. Oh, okay. Still concave here, yep. but sharpened on both sides. So this is from the yeah. Mortakis, yeah. that the, the family I said has been doing this since 1293. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's from them. Okay. And let's see. Hey, lefty? Oh, here's a lefty. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that, eh? Do you want to see them under there? Here you can. I'll just... Yeah, that's something. So right and left hand. Now traditionally would the Deva be right and left hand? Is this kind of something they do for... Oh, well it would typically be right handed. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Japanese 
for many years. <laughs> okay, had yeah. Everybody had to be right-handed. Yeah, gotcha. I even I even know uh, some of the old blacksmiths I talked to yeah. say, oh, they people they knew people in school that have their left arm tied to their really? body. Wow. So we would teach them how to use the right hand properly. Wow. That's something else. Hey? It's crazy, right? Yeah. Huh. That is cool. So yeah, that's definitely the one part about. That's why I was really excited about the book and uh, well, well, lots of good information. And then even you go into uh, the way they heat treat and stuff and the different right. fuels they use. It's just it's a really fascinating read. But there's also a lot of good technical information in here. Well, I tried. I tried to make a book that even my mother would want to read. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't want to make it too high level. There's yeah. some of those out there already. Yeah. yeah. We wanted it to appeal to beginners yeah. and even up to like guys like you who know a lot more about yeah. this, yeah. but you still got something out of it. Yeah, great. Yeah, that made my day that you said that. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic. I am absolutely, really, I love this book. This is a great book. <laughs> and like I say, I'm a non-reader, and I'm I read this book. Well, luckily, luckily, Visti Care yep. took great photos. Yes, and you have me for that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's got a yeah. Pentax medium format. Yeah. Something is one of those yeah. very. Yeah. It's digital. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's a very uh, new camera. Yeah. That's and, new. Because uh, that's the other thing that makes this book so incredible. The, the, the imagery is amazing. Yeah. And it's just and and the you know in the shops you you feel like you're in these shops with the the blacksmiths when you're you know it's it's just incredible. I think well, Visty was really excited because he got a lot of really backstage passes to this. So. Pentax has actually been flying him around to talk about this camera really? and the process because this is a subject matter camera geeks haven't really seen before. Yeah. Yeah. And if they have, they didn't have the background, like they didn't have yeah. the access that yeah. Misty's had. Yeah. But even like this shot, right? Like you're in there with him while he's working. You know what I mean? It's, it's so cool. So, yeah, all in all, I think this is an absolutely fantastic book. And uh, I'm glad you wrote it. Well, thanks, man. So I just, yeah, I just want to, if you guys are, are watching this and you're curious about this book, do yourself a very strong favor and pick up this book, The Knife Nerd Guide to Japanese Knives. Now, one more question for you. Yeah. I'm going to buy one of these from you. We can do that. To give away, right? Oh, cool. To the viewers, they just have to leave a comment on this video. But would you sign the book? I would love to. Okay. I love, I love signing Okay, good. Things. Okay, let's Usually I have my pen handy. I, I, well, I thought I brought a oh, Sharpie with me. Done. Okay. Oh, I good to uh, yeah, we're going to have a signed copy of this book for you guys to win. Yeah, and, we'll, even, uh, we'll even throw in a handful of weird knifeware stickers and that should be thrown a shirt. Oh, that would be a something shirt? else. Yeah. yeah. One of our weird shirts. The sharp knife rock or yeah. the I'll yeah. your size medium. Yeah, your size medium, you're set. So <laughs> <laughs> well, right on Kevin, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. This has been fantastic. Thanks for coming. In. Yeah. And uh, just letting us see into the world that you know of. It's a real honor and uh, really enjoyed this book. Well, you should come to Japan with me one time. Maybe that'd be fun. Will. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be totally cool. Perfect. Okay, I guess that's what it is. It's done. It's, it's happening we, now. We can vlog it. Yep. <laughs> right on. Well, guys, I hope that was uh, bearable. Most of that interview we were able to do, I should have definitely brought some lav mics and at least had Kevin mic'd up so that we could hear what he was saying a little bit more clear. Uh, but just to recap quickly, the first two thirds of the book or so, 200 pages is about the makers themselves. And that was a part of the book that I was like, yeah, sure, it's kind of cool. But once I started reading these stories, I was drawn into them. You can tell Kevin has a really great relationship with these blacksmiths and it really kind of lets you into their world. It's almost like, you know, vlogging like a YouTube channel, but on paper, it's crazy. Who knew books could do that? And then the last part of the book is a lot more of the technical information, you know, the different knife shapes, like, one thing that's always baffled me is, is what are these different knife names? Like a Yusuba? I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but what is that for? Why is that different than a Nikiri or something like that? And he goes into a lot of detail, very clearly explaining what each knife is, what the purpose is for, why it's used that way, and why, why would you need this variation of knives? So it's very educational in that respect. And then also there's a lot of information about the steels, the heat treating, how they do it, uh, knife care. You know, if you're putting together a collection, what are some, what are good starter knives? If you could have one knife or if you want to build a nice collection, where should you go? And kind of the reasoning behind that. So just a fantastic book, very well written. Um, this is a kind of book when you read it, it feels, it's very relaxing. You feel like you're visiting with a good friend. This one here, it says, Sharp Knives Rock, Kevin Kent, March 2019. All you have to do to win this is leave a comment on this video. Just one comment per person. If you comment twice, the random comment picker I use, it will 
catch that and you'll be disqualified. So just one comment, please. But that's not all. Kevin, being the great guy that he is, he threw in some stickers, some knifeware stickers, as well as a knifeware t-shirt that says Sharp Knives Rock. Who doesn't want that? Size medium, and I'm gonna put this all together as one single package. So the winning comment takes the whole kitty. We're not doing that multiple parts, it's too complicated. You know, I don't recommend all that many things on this channel unless I truly believe in them. Uh, but I'm gonna give you my personal recommendations that I think you are gonna really enjoy this book. Uh, the photography is amazing. Uh, Vishdi Kar was the photographer. Just look at the imagery in this book. It's, it's fascinating and there's so many photographs, you know, every page has a picture on it pretty much, if not every single one. But if you want to get into the world of Japanese knives and, and kind of see what this whole fuss is about, I don't know of a better way to, to learn about it than this book here. So I just want to say thank you so much to Kevin Kent for your time. You know, I told him, I said, I've got this, we've got this YouTube channel and there's this community and YouTube and Instagram and, and we're all crazy about knives. We're a bunch of knife nuts. And, uh, I want to bring this to them. I want to want to bring your book and tell them about it. And he gave his time uh, for us, for all of us. So thank you, Kevin. I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, again, go to knifeware.com, pick up this book, and you're not going to regret it. Absolutely fantastic book. Important, the contest is going to close at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on March. Let's do March 21st. So two weeks. Two weeks from the time this video comes out, you can enter to win it. 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I will shut the contest down and uh, we will pick one winner and I will ship this book anywhere on earth. Whoever wins it, congratulations to you. You are gonna be a happy camper. Plus a t-shirt and uh, stickers, it's a good deal. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.